What's the name again? Bob Corby. How do you spell that? Oh, of course, yes, Bob Corby. Of he course, I owe everything to Bob. No, no, he just yeah, I, I owe everything to him. Bob Corby. Oh, dude, he still owes me five bucks. That son of a bitch. Bob was just somebody else that you know said, hey, do a strip for my first mini comic, and it was called O, Com o Comics. And so I did a little, I just did like one little drawing or something, I believe, and sent it to him. And, and that was, became his, it was in his first issue. And then he's had many, many after that and huge, thick anthologies since. I've known Bob about as long as I've been doing small press. And he'd been talking about doing a show ever since the Spirits of Independence uh, show came to town in 95. Bob Corby is the greatest small press creator of all, the best artist, the most creative mind, and I'm, I'm saying that because he's putting me up for the night. Bob's the perfect guy for this show because, uh, I mean, he does this kind of out of his own pocket. Uh, I don't know if he makes money doing it. In fact, I know he doesn't make a lot of money if he makes any at all. And uh, he really does this because he loves it and it's fun for him. Well, I know he does this out of sheer love for the medium. I don't think he's ever made a nickel off of these shows. He's probably lost money on them, you know. But uh, he just loves doing it, and he's doing it for all of us. We can get together here and see each other year after year. He's a hero. He might make a little bit of money on this, but I'm sure the amount of work, you know, doesn't equal whatever that is. You know, he's really uh, to be admired, uh, giving a lot of people a start, you know, a chance to show their work, which is important to all these young cartoonists. And who knows? In this very room, we might have the next. Kevin Eastman and, or Harvey Pekar or Carol Tyler. We might have the next Carol Tyler in this very room. It kind of starts way back in Mid Ohio Con 1988. Uh, I just put together uh, the first O Comics right here, uh, which I still have copies of, which was basically Ohio Comics. It was because I noticed I, I got involved in the small press stuff with uh, review zines like Fantasy Frontiers and later on uh, the Small Press Comic Explosion. And I noticed there was a lot of uh, small pressers here in Columbus and, and in Ohio in general. So I thought, yeah, let, let's, get, let's get together, put a book together and take it to the Mid-Ohio Con. So we did the first issue and uh, had a table there by a door where the snow was blown in. And, and you know, was, where everybody, yeah. That was 1988. Yep, that was 1988. Yep, as it turned out that day is about 13, 14 small pressers showed up out of the woodwork and I just... You know, I always thought I was kind of, uh, you know, there's a few of us around, but uh, I was kind of surprised that so many people showed up, and that kind of made me think a little bit. And I thought, nah, I can't do a show with small press people. I just wouldn't work, so I dismissed it at that. And then in uh, 1995, uh, Dave Sim uh, announced the, uh, the Spirits of Independence shows uh, across the country. He's the guy that does service. He was the first guy to sit down and tell himself, uh, you know, I'm going to do a 300-issue miniseries. And uh, he, he finished it. And the first one was going to be here in Columbus, so I just jumped on that. I think I was the second guy to sign up. Me and, uh, oh, I can't think of his name, who uh, lives in Cleveland now. But uh, so I thought, yeah, oh, that's great. So, I, I, you know, we signed up. Um, we, uh, I think about, there was 30 or so exhibitors in that first show, and then a reasonable number of people showed up. And then uh, the next year, it, it kind of just disappeared. It just, it just it, nobody, nobody picked it up. It, it didn't really move anywhere. So I let it go for a few years, and then uh, about 2000, uh, uh, year 2000, I just decided to go ahead and, and do one. Space actually happened when, uh, when Bob Corby phoned me in... Uh, 2001 I'm pretty sure and um, wanted wanted to know if I would if I would come to his show and uh, I basically just said you know you're in Columbus Ohio get Jeff Smith you know it's, it's crazy getting somebody to come down from Canada but then he came back and asked me again the next year and I thought well okay if he asked me twice uh, I'm going to come down. That's so how we came up with the space and uh, put it on, and the uh, first one was a disaster. <laughs> the first show didn't go that well. Bob was a little discouraged, you know. And uh, I, I talked to him during and after the show, and he, I think he was pretty close to pulling the plug on the next year's show because, you know, people, the vendors were disenchanted and all this. And, uh, 
But I think I persuaded him to do it again. I told him it'll take time, it'll catch on, give it a, a two, three years, you know, it'll, it'll build. And it has. All the exhibitors really wanted to make it work, so they all agreed to come back. So we did a second show, and this time Dave Sim did show up, and we improved attendance a lot. I was here at the first one, I think. Yep. I don't know how many years ago that was, 10? I went to the first one, but I've got a damaged memory, so I can't tell you much about it. It, um, I remember being startled at the very concept of it. I never dreamed there would be a convention just for small press. I've been with space since it started. Since Corby did the very first one, we did it in this multi-purpose building on the fairgrounds. As soon as they herded the cows out, we came in. Bruce Chris standing right over there, dragged me to a convention. Is that what this is called? A convention? Two years ago? I found out about it uh, the first year, like a week after it happened. And then I was here 2001 through 2005. I missed last year and here I am again. Uh, but the first year was Space 2000, which of course, the first thing that came to my mind was they missed out on a bet because they should have started a year earlier and they could have named it after that great Martin Landau TV series, <laughs> Space 1999. I've been at this place for two years. We're, I guess the, uh, the previous location, I probably went to that for three or four years, so do the math. Seven years, we'll say seven years. Well, it's all small press people. It's getting bigger every year, and um, the people are really friendly. They're really friendly, they're really creative, and uh, it's, it's some, some shows can get a little competitive, and sometimes uh, shows can make you feel like an outsider if you're, if you're not working in the particular genre that they're most interested in. And some people can make you feel creepy for being a grown-up and there's nothing but kids around. The only reason I originally came to SpaceCon was to see Tim Corrigan because I would met him in Chicago every year I went and I loved talking to him and he always contributed to my slam bang, he still is. And so I felt, you know, I'd like to check up and see how he's doing and he brought his whole family to the SpaceCon. It's like a huge family event. You know, I had asked Dave about coming to the first space show and he said, no, he's too busy. He's got to finish service. So, you know, he was getting closer to the end of the, the 300, 300 issue run. And then, uh, you know, we had the, the disaster, disastrous show showing in the first year. So I, I did send him another letter and I said, you know, we're going to do it one more time if you're interested. And, uh, you know, I kind of said, thought, okay, you know, we're going to go through the motions one more time, and, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, no problem. And then I got a phone call from Dave one day, and he just said, he goes, I'm, I'm going to come to space. And I said, great, great. Uh, and he said, what I want to do is uh, start a, uh, a, 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 like a grant, if you will, or, or a prize for sm small pressers so that they, you know, to help fund their, their, uh, their publishing. Yeah, it just seemed like a, a good idea to have a, a festival prize. I'd always wanted to come up with something that would honor uh, uh, Gene Day's memory. Uh, Gene Day being a, a small presser from back in the 70s and, and you know, worked on Marvel's Master of Kung Fu, which is you know, really great stuff. He was such an enormous help to so many people who uh, wanted to self-publish or wanted just to write and draw and uh, if they were completely hopeless he could still get a couple of drawings out of them and uh, if they weren't completely hopeless he would take them up to the next level and for me you know without his encouragement I would never have had the confidence to say I I'm just gonna do Cerebus and if it doesn't work that's fine so he wanted to do that and he said I'd like to start it at, at space and he says that it's kinda nice and, you know you have already established the show and it, it is very oriented to, towards small press work. You know, there's not a lot of big names there, and also that's kind of the place he thought was uh, a good place to do this. So, so he came in in 2000, 2001, and we collected maybe about 50 books.
three or four generations of graders, and it's a very satisfying feeling. So for those of you who are just now getting in on the ground floor, it's probably a dying industry. Uh, <laughs> 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 you can all blame me. <laughs> well, thank you all very much, and uh, keep telling your stories. Welcome to the 2007 Howard E. Day Memorial Prize Ceremony. Well, it looked for a while there as if the ceremony wasn't going to happen at all. But now that the long, arduous, and costly small press writer's strike is over, <laughs> finally, once again, we can all look forward to seeing our favorite self-published and small press titles seeing print with the clockwork regularity and timeliness <laughs> for which so many of us in this field will be, as President Abraham Lincoln said about his own Gettysburg Address, little noted nor long remembered. James Algio is our next nominee for the first issue of Skull Pen, whose lead character is a ballpoint pen with a skull on top of it. I have many names. You may call me Skull Pen. Skull Pen only has one song on his iPod, Mother by Danzig. Mother screams across the cosmos like the entrails of Napoleon drawn across the bones of Hitler as they stretch the skin of Stalin across a drum shell made of the solidified essence of napalm and genocide. It's just this sort of whimsical, lighthearted, all-ages family entertainment we see too little of in the comic field these days. This is my fourth year at Space, and uh, Space is actually the show where I started out. And uh, I remember that I've been doing a comic called Lackluster World for, uh, it's, well, four years now. And uh, I remember the first show coming here and being really nervous because I'd never been to any convention before. I'd never done a comic book before. And uh, it was really... Uh, it was really just great. In fact, that was probably one of my best shows to date was that first one, just because it, it was such a relief to see that there was so much, I guess, com camaraderie with everything. And uh, uh, ever since, I've kinda, it's kind of been my show, and it's always been my favorite one. I think it's because I have a certain uh, sentimentality with it uh, that I don't get with any other show. This year, I'm here because I'm now teaching comics at the University of Cincinnati, and the first thing I did was teach them how to make a mini-comic. I knew a lot of these people from the uh, Chicago Con back in 1987 and 88, 89, 90. I went to all those. I met uh, Matt Fazell, Tim Corrigan, Larry Blake, all these people were there. Uh, but then I dropped out of small press for about 10 years or so. And then uh, it wasn't till 2004, I believe, or five. I think it might have been 2005 when I decided to check out the space con and I was still living in uh, Washington at the time so I went to visit my parents and then I flew from there to here for the con to check it out and so that was the first time I would experienced the space con this is very inspiring to see how people have um, um, been able to take whatever they're interested in in terms of their comic art and there's just about every level represented here so that's really really good for especially my students to see the college level because they're emerging and they're, you know, kind of getting into that. And there's, I, I just love seeing how people have interpreted the form, you know, uh, everything from little handmade, hand pressed, hand, handmade paper books to fully published uh, 
um, anthology is just great. So far, I'm finding everybody is like really friendly, really, really open community. It's exactly the kind of the kind of thing that I was hoping for, really. Just, uh, meeting a lot of people, a lot of fellow uh, comic artists, and, and so forth. And it's been really fun. Going to go home with a lot of people's books. We try every year to try to get get more people involved uh, and uh, bring more people through the door. Uh, as opposed to a regular comic book convention, I think there's more things of interest to people who aren't even interested in comics here than, than there would be at a regular convention. Uh, so we've been trying to work on that, that work that, uh, and, and just try to impress upon people the difference that, that there is. The way space uh, compares to some of the more well-known shows like SPX and Ape is, um, well, I guess SPX and Ape are more about, uh, there's so much publicity behind them. And like you have all these kind of, I guess, big name small pressers that go there. And uh, everybody's kind of focused on sales and uh, releasing new books. And space, you, of course, you get some of that and you want some of that. But space, it's just a bunch of guys there, a bunch of guys and girls uh, sitting around, hanging out. Uh, and it's kind of like a, a little gathering more than it is a, a convention. You go to like the bigger shows, the tables are more expensive, and find yourself competing against. Hey, Fanagraphics just put out a $40 book that everybody's going to buy and now they have no money left to buy anything else. Then this is great because everything is, everybody's on equal footing. Your book is just as much a chance to be bought as everybody else's. Um, I mean, and while it would be nice to see some of the larger publishers come in, maybe give the show a higher profile, I think it's great. I kind of went online and I kind of got involved with uh, some of the online communities or small, smallpresscomics.com and uh, you know it's, that was one of the places where I heard about space and uh, it was great for, for us because my wife has, uh, she's originally from Columbus so we had you know relatives to stay with here and we came, uh, I think our first convention was, uh, I think it was 2002 or 2003 um, when it was at the Ag Center and uh, we had a great time. You know, um, and we made some fantastic friendships that we still carry on. Um, and that's one of the main reasons we come back here is because uh, I get to kind of meet up with the folks that we might correspond via email over the course of the year, but to kind of sit with them, you know, after, uh, after space or before space and have a few drinks and just talk about comics or what we're working on is, uh, is actually one of my favorite things. Oh, it's, it's going to explode. You know, the technology available today for people to make their own comics, films, CDs, uh, it, it's power to the people. It, it really is, you know. And I think uh, the huge mega corporations that produce those things, comics, films, and so on, they've had to dilute their products so much to appeal to a mass audience. You know, it's all become so innocuous and inoffensive and lame, you know. People are going to lose interest in it, and will be more interested, I think, in the future in the work of the individual, rather than the product being produced by the corporation. I'll tell you something. You know, people who get into this, it's almost it's kind of guilty because it's almost like, okay, what are you going to do with your life? You're going to scribble comics, or you could go to law school. And the fact is, you know, I don't have the things for going into law school. I mean, I'm, I basically set up to be a starving artist, and they figured that out when I went into radio. Well, I've been to Chicago. I've not done San Diego. And uh, compared to those larger shows, I prefer these smaller shows because, I mean, people go to those larger shows to go see Stormtroopers. And, uh, you know, they want to go talk to Brian Michael Bendis and get their books signed by Frank Miller. Um, I don't know. I think people come here because they generally just want to see, uh, genuinely want to see good comics and good artwork and good stories and interesting people. I used to go to the Chicago cons until the wizard people took over. <laughs> that was my last year, it was their first year. Uh, about 20 years ago I was at the Chicago Comic Con and um, met up with uh, Matt Fazell and he pointed me in the direction of the small press room which was like at the bottom of a flight of stairs in a room that was about as big as a janitor's closet. Well, I haven't been to Chicago, Chicago Con in uh, about 10 years. But the last one I went to it was jammed with people. But uh, I think it was like thirty-five dollars to get in, or something to that, something around there. And 
that was too much money. The tables were too much money. What's the last maze? I, I, I did the math on it, and it got to the point where I, it would cost me like a thousand dollars to spend a weekend at one of these shows. You know, by taking your travel expenses, your hotel, your table, your purchasing. You know, you're going to buy other stuff, food, and everything else. And I and a lot of other people are not in a, in a position to drop that kind of money over a weekend. So. So I don't go to the major cons anymore. And I'm not that interested in their products anymore. The people that used to run Chicago Con bent over backwards for small press, and it sort of became the place to be if you were in small press. A lot of us met each other for, in person for the first time after corresponding for years at those conventions. It, it just was like a family reunion, and so is this. In San Diego, I think they're... They're still one of. They just want the mainstream movies, books, to, you know, things that are mass marketed, and uh, there are a lot of small press tables. Or but every year it's less and less because they keep raising the price more and more. There is no comparison. Uh, I mean, at that point, um, 20 years ago, it was still much more comic centric. Um, now the larger shows have turned into more media, media based. Or, oriented. Um, so I think in terms of the quality of material and the number of individual voices, um, Space and the other independent shows have, have the larger media shows you know, leave them behind. I have sort of a, a love-hate um, attitude toward San Diego. I mean, I, it's fantastic. I love seeing all the people out there. But um, the past several years, I, I think it's sort of reached the tipping point and gone beyond that where it's too big for its own good. You know, whenever I can sell a comic, I, you know, if I can sell it for a dollar, uh, I much prefer to do that because I, uh, for me, it's a, I get more of a joy knowing the people are kind of reading my comics and have an interaction with it rather than making a, a profit off it. You know, it's uh, business is so competitive these days that uh, really the, the people who make profits are Marvels, DCs and stuff like that. Everyone kind of does it, everyone else does it, does it for the love of the comics, the love of the, uh, the art. Uh, and, um, you know, space is uh, the kind of place that you're going to find comics like that. You know, people are going to put a lot of love into the work they do, and they're going to sell it for, uh, you know, a dollar or two, sometimes three dollars, depending on uh, uh, if there's color and stuff like that. So, uh, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a great form of entertainment. You know? It's frustrating to hear people complain about the state of entertainment when there are so many ways for them to you know, make their own stories and tell their own stories. Back in the day where you can get a a DC or comic book for 50 cents, uh, this has kind of replaced that, you know? Um, I find it much more engaging and exciting. You're going to find a whole range of stuff out there. I think it continues to improve every year, just in the people, the, 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 the artists that it attracts and the, the type of material that's available. You literally can't get around to see everything in the place uh, during the, the time of the convention, and there's just something wrong with that. I think there are a lot more options out there for folks uh, these days compared to when I was still cutting and pasting with glue stick and scissors at Kinko's at 3 a.m. I think it, it can go as far as, as the individual who's looking for a way to express themselves. There are any number of options or uh, means, materials, software, paper. Um, it's all out there. It's just a matter of how a person wants to do it and when. I think it's its, it's own genre in that um, I think it's going to always have this wonderful presence because the thing I come up against with my students is, and I say this to them all the time, you're too oriented towards the screen, you guys. There are things out there, paper, ink, you know, there's uh, stories that you can tell. So there's something very... Uh, um, tactile and tangible about actually, you know, creating work and creating little mini comics and creating books. Every year since then, I've said to them a couple of times, you know, if you ever, if uh, space ever becomes a, a committee run comic book convention where I don't know who's running what and I can't get a straight answer out of anybody, I'm probably going to stop coming down. But as long as it's uh, you and Kathy and uh, Kathy's his wife, Megan, his daughter, Ron, his brother. Those are the people running the show. You know, I'll keep coming back as long as it's just a you know, mom-and-pop operation. And so far, so good. 
space is really, I think, more of kind of the small press, self-published comics. You know, there's stuff here that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. So, uh, you know, I, I love coming here because, like I said, I'm not going to be able to find uh, certain books, certain creators uh, at comic shops or at beer comic shows. I can find them here. These cons are great. They seem to be getting better each year. I hope it just continues. I kind of thought we would start attracting more bigger names at some point, but I don't know if that's a, a happening. But it does seem to be growing here in, locally, and maybe that's that's what it needs to be. It, it, I think we've always tried to maintain it as a, a real small press show, and, and uh, you know, and and just worked it from there. And, and it's always fun to, to walk in here and see all the different work that uh, you, you, don't, you don't see anywhere else. As space has developed, uh, so have have we as comic creators. My wife and I uh, do a mini comic called Mr. Big, and we kind of debuted it here at Space uh, some years ago, and over the course of years we did a bunch of them, and we've uh, got actually uh, Little Foot Comic, uh, Little Foot Comics has compiled it into uh, a trade publication, and so we're debuting that here at this show. Um, so we've kind of you know, grown along with space, and uh, I look forward to doing space next year and the year after and the year after. Listen, fans. Listen, people. If you don't actually pick up that pen and dip it in the inkwell, get rid of your markers. They know what I'm talking about. Dip that pen in the inkwell, get to work, quit your bitching, turn the TV off, stop partying. Get down to it seriously you just have to do the work and then come to things like this come to events space is fabulous for the midwest come to space with your work talk to people network do it that's all i can say yes buy more comics especially if they have the words plastic and or farm in the title it'd be awesome an old cowpoke was camping out beneath a starry sky oh be sure you get the giant uh ball of balloons going in over there because uh, I know some booths drop balloons when they sell a book. <laughs> he choked upon a chicken bone and laid over to die. Uh, hasta la vista, baby. Then he awoke and heard a voice that caught him quite off guard. No, I do that. Uh, personally, on my booth, we do that every time we sell a book. Or if anyone even looks over at our tables. A spirit in a three-piece suit then handed him a card. Yippee-yay, yippee -yo. Ghost lawyers in the sky. An old cowpoke went riding out one dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way When all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw A plowing through the ragged skies And up a cloudy draw The ghost heard it their brands were still on fire and their hooves were made of steel Their horns were black and shiny and their hot breath he could feel A bowl of fear went through him as they thundered through the sky For he saw the riders coming hard And he heard their mournful cry in the sky Their faces gaunt, their eyes were blurred and shirts all soaked with sweat They're riding hard to catch that herd but they ain't caught them yet Cause they've got to ride forever on that range up in the sky On horses snorting fire as they ride on hear their cry I O. Sloped on by him, he heard one call his name. If you want to save your soul from hell, a riding on our reins. 
Then cowboy, change your ways today or with us you will ride a trying to catch the devil's herd across these endless skies. Here I am. I hope to be the next Pope when this one kicks the bucket. I hope they elect me Pope. Um, if not Pope, I'd like, I'd be like, I'd like, actually, no, Pope is good. I'd like to be the first Pope in space, uh, set up the new moon base Vatican. That would be awesome. And also, yeah, the first pope in space. He, he never thought that it's like a no brainer. Why not send the pope to space? Be closer to God. It's my twin sister. Oh, right. Twin. Oh, I do see a resemblance. 